Hey everyone, welcome to Connect. Your Connect small group is gonna get together in five minutes. Your Connect small group will get together in four minutes. Say hi to your small group leader. Your Connect small group gets together in three minutes. Start cleaning up your games. You've only got two minutes left. It's almost time, just one minute left.
We're gonna dance. We're gonna sing. We're gonna get real loud. Let our voices ring. We're gonna party. We're having fun with Jesus Christ. He's God's only son. Now everybody, from the front to the back, put your hands in the air and clap, clap, clap. Seeing old friends, making new friends. Here we go. Hey everyone, I'm Tony, and I'm Kat. Welcome to Connect. We are so happy you're here. It is great to see you. But before we get to the fun stuff, we've got a few rules to go over. These rules are here to help you and keep you safe. Kat, do you want to start? I'd love to. First up, rule number one: Listen to your small group leaders, respect them, and obey what they tell you to do. The grownups are here to help you, look out for you, and keep you safe. Next up, rule number two. Be a good friend. Treat others the way that you want to be treated. Remember the way that Jesus treated others. He always used kind words and showed respect and love to those around him. He'll help you do that too. Be on the lookout for people that are here for the first time. If you're a good friend to them, it'll make their day. We've covered the first two rules. You know what that means. It's time for rule number three. Have, Have fun. fun. This is my favorite part. <laughs> Me too. It's always so much fun getting to come to connect and spend time with your friends. All right, let's put on our glasses and see what's coming up next. I already wear glasses. Oh. Hey, it's time for offering. That's right, Mike. And as we give our tithes and offerings, I wanted to share this question that I just got from Monica. When I give money at church, how does it actually get from us to God? Solid question. It's not like there's some elaborate pulley system or a way we can shoot the money into the sky. Nope. Actually, our offering gets to God right here in the church in God's house. That's right. When we give, our leaders know that it's God's money, and they are very careful with how they use it. They pray and ask God how to make the wisest choices with it. Before spending anything, they listen to God to find out how He wants them to use it to make a difference in the world. Then the offering you give goes to where God needs it to go. So when we give money at the church, we're not just doing good; we're obeying God and we're giving the money straight to Him. Exactly. Thanks for the thoughtful question, Monica, and thanks for giving. Because giving is a great way to make, make a, a difference, difference and put, put God, God first. first. Do you know what time it is? It's time for us to connect to God by singing and dancing to music. Sometimes I don't always feel like worshiping, but then I remember it's not about me or how I feel. It's about God. God deserves our worship and thanks all the time. So let's give it all we've got. Get up on your feet and let's connect to God together.
this life is a journey A path made for me With every step I take As I run this race I'm becoming the person you call me to be A child of God, a life redeemed So I set my eyes on you Jesus, I'm ready I'm ready to go Where you lead, where you lead, I'll follow Where you lead, where you lead This is the journey of a lifetime The journey of a lifetime Got you already know me I wanna know you Stronger and discover the truth With every step I take With every step I take I'm becoming the person you call me to be A child of God, a life of the So I set my eyes on you Jesus, I'm ready I'm ready, I'm ready, let's go
Okay, I said I was gonna read my Bible every day and I haven't read it once this week. Today's the day I'm gonna get a streak going. I'm gonna get a good habit of reading my Bible every day. Just gotta concentrate. Okay, now I'm hungry. Now I can fucking break. Now I'm thirsty. <sighs> Refreshing. Now I can concentrate. And now I have to use the restroom. <laughs> we are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. Edison, and this is how I learned to not give up. Hey, we got a postcard. Want to read it with me? Uh, sure. Dear Connect HQ, I have a problem. There's this girl at my school. She's really popular, but she's mean to my best friend. Now she keeps asking me to be mean to my best friend, and I keep saying no. I want to be popular, but not mean. What do I do? From Charlotte. Hmm, that's a good question I know we can answer. In fact, I have a Bible story in mind, two by two. It's from the book of Genesis. Let's check it out. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God. We're searching God's word for things to discover. This book is alive, full of answers and godly advice. This book is alive. See the wonderful stories inside. Every day I'm searching, read through history and poetry. How much Jesus loves me. God's great story lives. There's no other book like this. This book. Is alive. Genesis. The earth filled up with people, but they sinned so much that God was sorry He had made them. He decided to send a flood to wash away everyone on earth. There was a man named Noah who wasn't like the others. Noah loved God and obeyed Him. God decided to spare Noah and his family from the flood. God warned Noah about the flood. He told him to build an enormous boat with a low roof, three decks, a window, and a door. In obedience, Noah built it. God told Noah to collect two of every kind of animal, one male, one female. Then Noah, his family, and the animals went into the boat. God shut the door. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Water fell from the sky and rose from the oceans and lakes. Even the tallest mountains disappeared beneath the flood. Meanwhile, Noah, his family, and all the animals were safe in the boat, floating on the floodwaters. God had not forgotten about Noah, not even for a moment. God sent a wind to blow. The waters went down. The boat rested on Mount Ararat. Noah sent out a dove. When it didn't return, he knew it was safe. When the ground was dry, God told them to come out. He put a rainbow in the sky as a promise 
that he would never flood the whole earth again. What does that have to do with being popular? People made fun of Noah for following God's command to build that gigantic boat. It seemed like a crazy idea to them. But Noah trusted God, no matter how unpopular it made him look. And because of his obedience, God kept Noah's family and the animals safe through the flood. That's right! So Charlotte should continue doing the right thing even when it makes her unpopular. We are going to answer her question in no time. Want to help me? Uh, no. Great. Let's keep this ball rolling. Wait, what? I'm sorry. I can't help you with this problem. Why not? I have been trying to read my Bible every day for weeks. You want to know how many times I've read it? How many? None. How am I supposed to encourage someone not to give up when I can't even do it myself? If Noah can keep going, I bet you can too. Noah's Noah. I'm just Edison. Hmm. Come with me. So, what do you think? Is there an experiment we could do that could encourage Edison and Charlotte to keep doing the right thing? Well, you know what I always say, don't you? Delicious? <laughs> it's just such a fun word to say, delicious. <laughs> but that's not it. I always say I love helping out with an experiment. Great! So what kind of experiment shows someone doing the right thing over and over, even when it's hard? Ooh, how about setting up a social experiment here at Connect HQ? Here's an entire folder full of fun ideas I've been wanting to try. How about this one? It's called Continuous Loop. I don't know. It seems like that won't work. We won't know until we try. God gives me courage to never give up. I like that confidence. And that would be a great point link for Charlotte. God gives me courage to never give up. I didn't even think about how much courage it takes to keep doing the right thing. We need lots of courage. And for this experiment to work, we also need a test subject. I'll do it. Sorry, Dot. It would only work on someone who doesn't know about the experiment. But I can still use your help. You will need this. And a test subject. Leave that to me. <laughs> hey, Tony. What you working on? Hey, uh, well, there's not a lot going on today, so I'm just spending some Tony time with Tony. <laughs> cool. I might need your help with something. Okay, well, you say the word and I'm there. Okay, bye. Okay. Okay, I'm in position. Ready for experiment one. Okay, so for the first part of our experiment, We'll keep it simple. We'll just see if our test subject makes the right choice. He's Tony. He's the nicest guy I know. He'll definitely do the right thing. <laughs> Let's watch. Hey, Tony. Hey, what's up? I found this wallet full of money at the park. Hmm. Hmm, there's not an ID in it. So the money belongs to us, right? Finders keepers. <laughs> well, no, it doesn't really work like that. We do need to find the rightful owner to this. You know, just because we find something. Oh! That alarm means my muffins are done. Oh, okay. Well, I, I'll call the police station and see if anyone reported a missing wallet. Did you actually expect him to take any of the money? It's Tony. He's a good guy. Agreed. Now let's see what happens when we do it again. Hey, Tony. Hey, so I called the police station. I found this wallet full of money at the park. Y yeah, I, I know. We were just talking so about it. So the money belongs to us, right? Finders keepers? Well, no, like I said a second ago, it doesn't really work like that. You know, we do have to find the right... Oh! That alarm means my muffins are done. Okay. What just happened? Now the fun begins. We just keep doing the continuous loop to see how the test subject responds. Hey, Tony? Yeah? I found this wallet full of money at the park. Okay, am I going crazy? So the money belongs to us, right? Finders keepers. Uh, okay. 
no, Dot, come on now. You come on, you know this. No, that the money doesn't belong to us. So. Oh, that alarm means my muffins are done. Okay, surely that was the last time. I. <laughs> What's going on? Hey, Tony. Let me guess. You found some money and a wallet. I found this wallet full of money at the park. Mm-hmm. Yep. So the money belongs to us, right? Finders keepers? keepers? No. Listen, I, I don't know what you want me to say here, but we have to find the rightful owner, okay? Is, is any of this getting through to you? Ooh! That alarm means my muffins are done. Okay, little wallet. It's just you and me now. If I ever get out of this time loop that I seem to be in, I will find your rightful owner. I will do it. Hey, Tony? Your muffins are done, and that money does not belong to you. I found this wallet full of money in the park. Okay. <laughs> ah, looks like we're losing Tony. It's not always easy to do the right thing over and over again. I'm sure it's not easy for Charlotte, and sometimes it's not easy for you, too. But it is encouraging to see Tony keep saying no to taking someone else's money. He just keeps going. Here they go again. Hey, Tony. <sighs> Might as well just have fun with it. What do you got there, Dot? I found this wallet full of money at the park. <gasps> you don't say. So the money belongs to us, right? Finders keepers? Yeah! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we, we have to find the rightful owner to this. But more importantly... <gasps> beep, 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 beep. Ooh, that, that alarm, alarm means, means my muffins, muffins are, are done! done. <laughs> <sighs> Tony never gives up. It takes courage to keep going. And he certainly has it. So, now that I understand, should we let Tony out of the experiment before he uh, loses his mind? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> I'm just so happy that that was an experiment, and I'm not, you know, going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for showing me a good example. I was having a hard time setting a good habit, and I was ready to give up. <laughs> you know, there's actually a verse that helps me. It's in the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 9. Here, let's say it with me like this. Come on. Galatians 6, 9. Galatians 6, 9. Oh. <sighs> So let's not get tired of doing what is good. <sighs> so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. We will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. <laughs> nice job. You see, doing something that is good is not just a one-time thing. We have to find the courage to do that every single day. So I shouldn't get tired of setting a good habit. No, I, I wouldn't. And whenever you get discouraged or when things get tough, just rely on God and he'll give you the courage to keep on going. <laughs> Hi, Charlotte. My name is Dot. We found an answer to your question. The Bible tells us this in the book of Galatians. Say it with me like this. Galatians 6, 9. Oh, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. I know it can be hard to do the right thing over and over, especially when it's unpopular. Noah went through something similar when God asked him to build an ark. Even though it seemed crazy, Noah had followed God for many years and learned to trust Him. Noah's courage through all those years blessed him and God protected him. Sometimes courage is a big, brave event, but courage is also doing what's right every single day, over and over, no matter what challenges come up. You may be tempted to give up and do things your own way, but ask God to help you to not grow tired of doing what is good. It's awesome that you are being nice to someone. Even if it's not popular, keep it up. When it gets tough, just say, God gives me courage to never give up. 
and trust that He will give you courage. Thanks, Charlotte, for your thoughtful question. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Hey, Edison, have you seen Professor Malcolm? I still have his wallet. Um, I haven't seen him since this afternoon. I set a timer to see if I could concentrate on reading my Bible. I'm almost done. Great job! I'll see if he's in the observatory. <gasps> no, 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 no. Uh, no, huh? it's okay. There's no experiment, Tony. I'm okay. just putting this away. Okay, okay. No. Oh, no! The muffins are done! The muffins are done! <sighs> it was just my watch. Without that talk about muffins, I decided to make some. Chocolate chocolate chip is my favorite. <laughs> Sometimes you need a little courage to do the right thing day after day. You can ask God for help. Maybe you've never asked God for help. Maybe you've never decided to follow Jesus with your life. If you don't know where to start, all it takes is a little courage and the ABCs. A. Admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying Him. B. Believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C. Choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. If you want to make that choice today, be sure to talk about it with your Connect Small Group leader before you leave.